Shalom, shalom. I send you greetings from the Pearl of Africa, Uganda. It has been my home now for the last 25 years and uh, it is beautiful here. Now, originally I am from Austria and uh, please don't confuse us with Australia because in Austria there are no kangaroos, just mountains and the capital is Vienna. And we, I greet you now with a message that I get questions about all the time. How can I hear God? And darlings, it is the most important thing in any relationship that communication is flowing well. Hearing and hearing what the other person wants to say. So I want to read to you a, a few scriptures. Uh, in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. In John 10, 24 to 27, the Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak to me speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. In John 14, 26, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. In Mark 13, 31, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So, dear ones, hearing a person is a matter of intimacy, a matter of knowing each other. And uh, I promise you, my mother could have called me in the middle of the night and only mentioned my name. I would know this is my mama. And I could call her and only say mama, and she would know it is her oldest daughter. So, dear ones, it is a matter of getting to know Jesus Christ, of having a personal, intimate love relationship with him. And that's what life is all about. <clears throat> you know, we have now been looking in the last decades, even centuries, for our satisfaction in things. But God is giving satisfaction in relationship. A relationship with him, a relationship with myself, and relationship with my fellow man, even relationship with animals, relationship with nature. Relationship is what Jesus came to, to bring us back to. He only left us with two commandments. First, to love God more than anything. Second, to love your neighbor as yourself. So my question is, do you love yourself? Or do you still try to earn a love by what you do? That will be another chapter I will speak to you about. Dear ones, God loves you. God loves you. God is crazy about you. And God had a fantastic day when he made you. God makes no junk. He makes only wonderful originals. But the enemy has distorted a lot of these truths and has fed us with lies. And we have believed those lies. Darlings, the Bible says hundreds of times, and God said, and God said. These Bible verses show us that he likes to speak as a father to his children. But people often complain that they have never heard him speak. What conditions do we need to fulfill in order to recognize God's voice? First of all, we need to get to know God and live in a relationship with him. John's Gospel says, my sheep hear my voice. We should consciously accept God, humbly our, humble ourselves, and be prepared to be told things. You know, most of the people, most of the people want to serve God, but more in an advisory sort of way. They want to tell him what he should do. But dear ones, he is the Lord, he is the boss, and he wants to tell you and me what he wants to do through us on this earth. Just like his son, Jesus Christ, he only did what he heard the Father 
he only spoke what he heard the father speak and he did what he saw the father do. It is such a, oh, it's such a relaxing lifestyle when you know Papa has planned everything and you just wait on him and listen to him. Yeah. So um, in John 6, 30, uh, 63, we read, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. And in John 6, 60, 68, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. God's words have strength and power. Dear ones, none of us can say that we have already reached God's goal for our lives. Each one of us is in God's school. We call it the University of the Holy Spirit. The more sensitive we become to his voice and, to, and uh, the more prepared we are to believe, accept and apply what we hear, the faster we will grow in our life with God. It is a proven fact that it is possible to spend one's whole life in church and yet learn nothing. One may know Bible verses by heart and be able to recite various passages, yet the most important thing, knowing God personally, is missing. We can only know him through a personal relationship, not by collecting facts. God seeks our fellowship. He seeks those who are in love with him and who trust him under all circumstances. He wants us to get to know him, to exchange ideas with him and to talk intimately with him. God speaks in a still small voice that can seldom be heard acoustically, yet it is firm definite and persistent. He repeats what he says, speaks quietly and warmly in a few words. His words are life-giving, constructive, encouraging, full of hope, but also convicting. Satan, on the other hand, shouts loudly. He is hectic, restless, pressur pressurizing, demanding, and can lull your suspicions through many words. He often speaks in a curt way and makes you afraid. He condemns and accuses, pulls and drives. If you have doubts about whose voice you are hearing, then it is best first to wait. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and you will then hear God's voice. <clears throat> you will recognize more and more that you are able to hear him, for it is God's will that we trust his guidance and follow him. God has given us the right to hear him. We shouldn't tell him how he how he has to speak to us, for he has many possibilities. Dear ones, it was quite a few years ago, I was living in America, and I was driving my car, and suddenly I hear the Holy Spirit telling me, turn on the radio, and I did. And to my surprise, I was shocked that something came out of the radio, because God was speaking to me. He said, Maria, turn it off again. I turned it off again. He said, you hear anything? He said, is there music in this car? Are there people speaking? I said, well, I just heard some. He said, why did you hear them? He said, because I got on their wavelength. And then the Lord made me go from wavelength to wavelength and I heard English speaking, the Latin, um, um, <laughs> German speaking, French. I, I got classical music, I got rock music. I got all kinds of things. They were in the car, but because I was not on the right wavelength in my radio, I didn't hear it. So my question is, are you on the wavelength of God? The wavelength of God is not worry, is not fear, is not condemnation. The wavelength of God is trust and faith and expectancy to hear from a good God. Dear ones, now I will speak about different ways that I have experienced in my life the speaking of God very clearly. In Psalm 19, 1 to 3, we read, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. <clears throat> night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. I am convinced that the stars were the first Bible that Abraham and Moses read. 
God has often spoken to me through animals and nature and revealed his love to me through them. Uh, dear ones, <laughs> a few weeks after my husband's death, I was sitting on the couch in my room crying. My collie dog, who was very close to me, sat, looking at, sat in front of me, looking at me. Before long, I saw a tear roll down his dog face. It was as if God heard, it was as if I heard God saying, I know your pain and I'm weeping with you. But let me tell you, dear ones, astrology is the twisted truth. You know, the enemy cannot do any, create anything. He takes the truth of God, twists it a little bit, and then sells it to us. Astrology is not for Christians. Astronomy is the, is the, 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 the science of the, of the stars. And I do know astronomers that really are convinced that we are in the end times because of what they see in the Bible, uh, in, in, the, in the stars. And they read this, this, uh, this future out of the stars. Now let me tell you how God has spoken to me several times. It was quite a few years ago, many years ago. I was in, in Florida and I, I love to walk on beaches in the early morning hours when nobody is there and I talk with God and that morning I walked on the beach it was a very flat beach uh, no tree far and wide and the water the waves came to the beach and dolphins were jumping in that water and it just came out it was you know a day where I didn't feel that I am important on this earth that there are even plans for me and I said Lord I I do believe that if I disappeared today in those waves, not a single dog would care about it. I continued walking. And that's how I felt. You know, when I was young, I felt very many, many years on the verge of suicide. But because I was a Christian, the fear of the Lord kept me from doing it. But I envied everyone that was in a, in a casket. I thought, this person has already accomplished his walk on earth. I still have to live. So that day, dear ones, it, was, it wasn't five minutes later, a dog was at my side licking my hands. I felt like God in heaven was saying, what did she just say down there? Not a single dog would care if she disappeared in these, cloud, in these waves. Let me teach her a lesson. And he found a dog. He was a stray dog. He said, you go and lick this lady. Do my job for her today to let her know that a dog cares. And I tell you, dear ones, this was the most beautiful dog I've ever seen. All day long, I played with that dog. And if I could have had the opportunity, I would have taken this dog home with me. God is so good. God is so wonderful. God can speak in so many ways. Like in, in Uganda, one day I heard a knock like this. I said, come in, please. Nobody came. Again, I said, please come in. The door is open. Nobody came. So I got up. And, I, and also it was a day where I was kind of sad and things didn't go the way I expected them to go. And there were some complications and I was down. So I got up to look where the knock came from. I saw on my balcony door a huge bird with these yellow peaks. What are they called? Uh, I don't know the name now, but it, it, I will remember soon. And he knocked with his big peak on my glass door. I went there and I said, what are you doing here? You're, 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 you're breaking my glass. And then he jumped up on the, on the railing and just cleaned his feathers a little bit. I said, what did you come for? And suddenly he did, I mean, he let out some really weird sounds. And it was like he was telling me, come on, praise the Lord. So I went to the piano. You know, I play piano, but uh, not in public, just between the Lord and I. And I started worshiping God. 
and the bird was out there on the balcony with his do 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 and I was singing the Lord and I've, every time now when I need an encouragement that hornbill is the name the hornbill comes and tells me just praise the Lord and one day I was sitting in my office and God told me to give quite a big amount to some uh, institution I said Lord this is quite a bit of money you know we are not swimming in money please give me a confirmation and again I heard this knock I looked at the balcony and there was my hornbill sitting there but this time with his wife and he had a big insect in his in his peak and when he saw me he fed that insect to his wife and I knew God was telling me, give what you have. Dear ones, you know God speaks a simple language. And I gave, and it was a great blessing. So God speaks to me very much through, the world, through his creation. And it's, it's his handwriting. It's his handwriting. And I give seminars and people, you know, they want to be like others, so they are not content with what they are. I say, go out there now. And everyone brings at least, at least 10 different leaves. And they bring the leaves and put them there. And I said, which one is now the most beautiful one? And they can tell. They are all different in color, in shape. Uh, they, in, they, they are so different, you can't even compare them. And I say, you see, when you are not even able to tell with leaves who is the most beautiful one, how much more can you not tell who is the best amongst us? God makes only good stuff. You are a unique creation of God. And if you compare yourself with somebody else, you are becoming a copy. And God wants you to die as an original. So accept yourself the way you are, with all the weakness, with all the strength, with all your past, with everything. And trust the Lord that he can and he has good plans for you. He has plans that are far beyond your imagination. And he can make something out of, well, if we give him all the shit in our lives, he can make dung out of it. If we give him all the broken glasses of our lives, he can make a mosaic out of it. God can write straight on crooked lines. So trust him with your life. Give him your life unconditionally. He wants to, us to be connected with him a hundred percent. Dear ones, 99 percent is not enough. A hundred percent. We belong to God. We have been bought with a high price through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. We belong to him. And we have confirmed that through our baptisms that we died with Christ and we rose with him. And now we are seated with him in the heavenly places. We should look down on our problems because we are not under our problems. We are far above. And if you, if you want to pray right, tell your problems how big your God is. And tell God how small your problems are. And you will see how they will shrink. Dear ones, God speaks throughout the day, but are your ears tuned in to him? Are you willing to receive messages from him that confuse your thinking that is not based on the word of God? God is in these days especially looking for people that speak the language of heaven, which is faith, which is the word of God. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. He who is in me is stronger than the one that is in the world. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask what you want, and it will be given unto you. I will finish the good work that I have started in you. Darlings, the Bible is full with promises, thousands of them. But you need to read them, and you need to believe them, and you need to stand on them. And you need to put more weight in these promises of God than you have put into your doubts or in the news from television, radio, and newspapers. Even WhatsApp, dear, dear ones. Let us speak the language of heaven, which is faith. 
and the language of hell is fear. And right now, the, the whole world is in the grip of fear. And we need to get out of that because we are not of this world. We are in the world, but not from this world. We belong to the kingdom of God and there the laws of the, of the Bible, eternal laws, are valid and not the stupidity of the tree of knowledge. Dear ones, I want to speak about one more issue. As the first one is God speaks through his nature, through his creation. The next one is God speaks through his word, the Bible. And I want to, to uh, advise you, if you want to get your ears trained to hear, start reading the Bible loud for yourself and start with Psalms and start with Proverbs and start with the New Testament in the beginning. Later on, you can read everything, but start with what is written for us. Uh, the Old Testament was really written for the Jews and it's wonderful. They are the shadows of the things to come. And it's good to read them, but don't start with them if you have never read the Bible. Start with the New Testament. And start with the Gospel of John. That is the easiest to understand. <clears throat> so, when we read, study and meditate on the scriptures, we receive direction and instruction for our lives. And I advise you, please, just open, start systematically and say, Holy Spirit, I ask you now to speak to me what you want to tell me today. And I promise you, if you just read it loud and have an open heart, suddenly something starts, you feel there's something alive on that page or something is touched in you and you say, yeah, that's it. You write it down and you memorize it and you meditate on it. This is the word that God wants to give you. But you know the word, if it's just up here, it's not enough. The word needs to come down into your heart and be mixed with faith. And it needs to be, become part of you. Just like your food, you digest it and you get strength from it. And so the word of God needs to be digested and changed into spiritual strength. And I promise you it works very well. <clears throat> But if we don't read the Bible, however, we open ourselves to all kinds of different voices. The Word of God trains our ears and our faith so that we can distinguish between what comes from God and what doesn't. Whatever comes from God, dear ones, has always released in my heart joy and peace. <clears throat> yeah, for many situations, the Lord will clearly speak. Ask him for everything. I pray for parking lots. I pray for everything. The Lord says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. But at, at other times, God reminds us of a particular Bible verse just, that is just right for our personal situation. When our family was discussing our inheritance and the lovely house that my parents and all of us children had built, I sensed a great deal of tension among my brothers and sisters. I prayed and asked God, Lord, what do you want here? Have you plans to use this house for the kingdom of God or should I let go? He answered me, to, he answered me by reminding me of Psalm 4511. Now listen, daughter. Dear ones, how many times does the Bible speak of daughters? My, my, most of the time it speaks of sons. Don't miss a word. Forget your country. Put your home behind you. It was clear to me that God wanted me to let go completely. And so I did. My family was very surprised at my calm attitude about the whole situation. Yet when God speaks and we obey, we have always made the best choice. God has given me more houses in the meantime than all my brothers and sisters put together about a hundred times. But we let go, God multiplies. Dear ones, I advise you to become a fervent reader of the Word of God. These are the love letters of God. God wants to reveal his character to you. Study the lives of our relatives in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, also what they went through. To become 
who God wanted them to be. You know, I will speak about this another time, but we were all born in paradise after Eve failed and listened to the, to the crafty voice of the devil. We were all born again with the nature of the devil. And for many hundreds of years, God had big problems to, rea to make mankind realize, the Jews, that they needed forgiveness and that sin demands death. And so a, 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 a Jewish uh, believer, a born-again uh, Jew, a Messianic Jew, he went and did the effort to find out how much blood was shed in the Old Testament. And he realized it was a huge stream that flowed of blood through the whole New, uh, Old Testament to tell us sin is, can only be paid with, with death, with blood. And God had to give the Ten Commandments to the Jews to let them know how much they needed salvation. And dear ones, for us as Christians, he has put them both together in, he has already put the, the, the Ten Commandments and the many, many, many more that they made out of them into two. To love God with all our heart, with all that we are, we have and we can. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And that includes all the commandments. So, whenever you are in doubt, you just ask the Lord, what would other people want me to do in this situation that are walking in the light? Or, Lord, how do you see that situation? How do you want me to act in this situation because I want to do your will? And God will show you. And there will be surprises for you, dear ones. God is a wise God, and God wants to lead you through his word, through, and we, we can continue. Uh, yeah, it, this is just two points, but there are six more that God will speak to you through those means. But in the meantime, get on the right wavelength. Peace, trust, faith, joy, change. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and lead you from glory to glory because that's what he wants.